Have you ever thought about sending a same HTTP parameter multiple times with different values in the same request? What would happen if you send this, for example? Which user's data will the response return? Is it going to be Anderson or is it going to be Smith? The answer to the question is it depends on the backend server. If you try to search online, I mean, literally search online, you'd see that the query parameter in Yahoo returns the last value. However, Google returns both the values concatenated. Now, some servers return the first value, some return the last value, and others return everything. For our simple example, if our server code was written in JSP and if it was running on Apache Tomcat server, it would return the first value. If it was PHP on Apache, it would return the last value. And if it was ASP.NET on IIS, it would return all of them concatenated. Weird, right? I know. So what should we consider? Anderson or Smith? Or more importantly, why do they all have different implementations? The answer is very simple. It's because there is no specification for it or simply there's no standard way for accepting HTTP parameters. So people just made their own choices and everything just became a mess. Anyways, we now know about this weird behavior, but can we abuse it in a way that it weakens the security? No surprise here, yes we can. Look at this simple example. Assume that we have a website, let's call it somesocialnetwork.com. You can do the usual things like posting on a newsfeed or sharing your post on other platforms like Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that. When you try to share a post on Facebook, you'll see this URL. As you can see, there are two parameters. The first one is the title of the post and the second one is the URL to the post. You might already see the problem here. If you look closely at the Facebook share URL, you'll see that there's an ampersand which is not really encoded, which means you can add your own HTTP parameters in the title of the post, and it gets reflected in the Facebook share URL without encoding. So in this case, what happens if I add another U parameter in the title of the post and set it to attacker.com? Let's see, if I set the title to my payload and click on share, there we go, we just share the attacker's website instead the link to the original post. Okay, that's cool, but how the hell did that work? Let's break this down for a moment. When you try to share a link to a post on Facebook, the Facebook share service requires two parameters. We already know this. One is a title and the second one is the URL. Since the title is not really encoded, we can add an ampersand at the end and have our own HTTP parameters appended at the end. Now, if you notice, there are two U parameters. If you look closely at the Facebook share URL, you'll see the name of the file, which is responsible for sharing all the stuff on Facebook. It's sharer.php. Now we know it uses PHP. Usually PHP considers the last occurrence. So in our case, the original U parameter, which comes at the first will be ignored and our newly added parameter will be considered because it's the last occurrence. And now when you try to share the link on Facebook, it will accept our attacker website instead of the original post URL. The behavior that you just saw right now is termed HTTP parameter pollution. In fact, I just explained to you one of the real world examples that I came across last year. This might not seem much and you're right, it's not. But there are better cases where people have actually found remote code executions by chaining HTTP parameters with it. Let me introduce you to a classic HTTP parameter pollution example. Let's assume that we have a bank. Let's call it Jack Bank because we're jacking all the money. Just kidding. Let's just call it the bank. As usual, you're allowed to transfer money between different accounts. Let's do that now. There's this drop down list where I could select the recipient and the amount that I want to send and I can simply click on send. Now in my burp proxy, I can see all the traffic going between the server and my browser. Upon inspection, 
you can see that there are two parameters. First one is amount. It's simply the amount you're trying to send. And the second one is the two parameter, which is the name of the person who receives the money. This is usually going to be something like a UID or a user ID in real life. But since we're trying to understand the basics, I've just kept it simple. After the request hits the server, the server will make another request from the back end to the payment gateway. Now this service is the real deal. It's responsible for handling the actual money transfer and the website is more like a wrapper around the service. The request to the payment gateway looks something like this. It's very similar to the other one that we saw earlier, but there's an extra parameter, which is from. Now this parameter is not directly coming from the website itself because the attacker could simply modify it and steal all the money. So to prevent this, the server uses your cookie to get the name and then add it at the backend request so that you have no way of changing the value. Now we know we can't change the value, but we can still sneak our own parameters with a different value. Now pause the video for a second. Try to find a solution for yourself. The goal is to transfer the money from Jake's account to the attackers. And also the payment gateway is written in PHP and it's running on Apache. I'll give you five seconds. Great job if you figured it. If you didn't, no problem. I got you covered. All you gotta do is to add two extra parameters at the end of the original two parameter. When the request hits the backend server, it will add another extra parameter, the from parameter. We already know that. And since the two parameter that we sent is simply URL decoded and appended at the end of the payment gateway request URL, we can simply add our own parameters. Now, if I want to transfer the money from Jake's account to attacker's account, what can I do? We can simply add our own parameters like from and to again, and this pollutes the parameters. When this request hits the payment gateway, the server is running on Apache and it's written in PHP. We now know that this only considers the last occurring parameter, which means the payment gateway will see the parameter something like this. And when the transfer happens, it goes from Jake to attacker, ergo we have a way to steal the money. HTTP parameter pollution is one of those flexible bugs which can be used with other vulnerabilities and even bypass some constraints like web application firewalls. Let's say there's a firewall sitting in front of a web application and maybe written in Flask. But this firewall is preventing us from executing an SQL injection that we found in a parameter. We know it's vulnerable, but we can't put our payload in there because the firewall is blocking you out. But there's always a way out. If you've ever tried checking yourself, Flask creates immutable dictionaries. Now, these dictionaries have all the values that you provide in an HTTP parameter pollution scenario, but when you call the get method on it, it only gets the first occurrence. So it's safe to consider that Flask gets only the first parameter. And if it was Django, it's the other way around. It actually creates a query dictionary and uses the last occurrence. And if it was Express Framework running on Node, it would be an array of all the values that you provide. But coming back to the example, our goal is to bypass this web application firewall, which is blocking us out. So to do that, we need to understand how the web application works and also how the web application firewall works in terms of HTTP parameter parsing. If there's a difference between them, we could easily bypass it. So let's say the WAF or the web application firewall checks only the first occurrence and the web app was actually using the last occurrence. Then you have a quick and easy bypass, simple as that. And also in some cases where the web application actually concatenates all the values of the HTTP parameters, you might have a nice little bypass for that. It could be something like this. You can split the payload into multiple parts and use them across different HTTP parameters. If you notice, there's a pattern. This is a parser differential problem, which means different services or different applications parse things differently, 
which could lead to security vulnerabilities in many scenarios. HTTP parameter pollution is an old vulnerability, surfaced around 2008 or 9. I might be wrong here, but still you can find a lot of them. Why? Because the developers don't really know about it. So I hope after watching this video, some developers start considering that this could be something that should be taken care of. I'm guessing only the InfoSec community watch my videos, but still, you can share this to your developer friends. This is one of those weird bugs where everything seems fine, but it's not. So next time you come across a HTTP parameter, you know what to do.